Are you guys ready? Ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome you to our Sound Voice Live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to an excerpt, a special here on the Sound Voice Live. I have the honor and the privilege of sitting next to one of my favorite male actors, none other than Mr. Louis Gossett, Jr., born in New York City. His mother was a community activist, and his father was an administrator in the local gas company there. And he graduated high school, but he had an honor and a privilege of being a part of Take a Giant Step in the theater, and it launched his theater career and also warranted him, warranted him excuse me, the Donaldson Award. And uh, there's a lot that I don't think people really know about you, Mr. <laughs> Gossett, and we're going to take this a little bit of time to try and educate them as much as we can. Welcome to Atlanta. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. I was just telling everybody I'm dressed properly for Washington with my long johns on. You see. <laughs> So, yeah, so. But it's a little warm here. It's a little warm up here in Atlanta, in Hotlanta. Yeah. <laughs> in Hotlanta. Yeah. Well, welcome, and we know that you are here for the Trumpet Awards. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a, a recipient. Before the Walk of Fame, I, I, I got the Trumpet Awards some, quite a few years ago. Like, probably the first or second year it was, the, it was done by my friend, my, my very good friend, Zonona, and her husband. And uh, what a great, I remember she's, Ted Turner put her right outside the door of his office. So mm -hmm. I came to see Zonona, and she said, Ted, come on out here. <laughs> I want you to meet somebody. And it's been uphill since then. But, but that's the, the greatest lady I've ever met, you know. Well, it's good to run across wonderful people in our lives. And um, I heard you kind of got it going on with a little basketball. And you had a little history yeah. with uh, New York. Oh, yeah. I was, a, I was in, on Broadway with a Raisin in the Sun by the time I got out of NYU, New York University. That team was pretty big. It was 21 and 1. It had to. That Seth Sanders went to Celtics, and that Happy Harrison went to the Lakers, and Cal Ramsey went to the to the uh, Knicks. And I was on Broadway. I kept missing, so I wasn't really uh, drafted from that team. But I played summer basketball up in the Rucker tournament, and they invited me up to the camp, to the rookie camp up in the Catskills. And I turned out to have more money in my pocket than they had in the bank. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and they were poor. <laughs> not now. It's not just the trouble now, but that. And there was really fist fighting and stuff to get those jobs. So I said, you know what? While my body is still intact. I'm going to go back and get back on Broadway with Sydney. So I did a Raisin in the Sun, which lasted a year and a half. And I, for a long time, I kept those, those original high tops. But uh, I think I still made the right decision. Different decision today. It would be a different decision. I could do both, you know. But uh, I'm glad I did, continue to be an actor. I'm glad you did, too. But um, there's something, a little bit of trivia, that we're going to share with everybody. Because before the 1977 miniseries with Roots, mm -hmm. You had another awesome opportunity that you were afforded, but we remember the role being played of Gail Sayers. Oh, wow, yeah. By uh, um, someone else, Billy but D. by Billy Dee, of course. Mm -hmm. But you had that opportunity afforded to you. Could you tell us a little bit about Brian's song? Well, yeah, I, was, I had Brian's song. I, I, the, the, we had, I was chosen to play Brian's song, and I went out for the weekend, and I started playing with Bernie Casey and all those guys, playing basketball. And uh, on Sunday, we went out to the to the park in Los Angeles to play some basketball. And I got my Achilles tendon. My Achilles tendon <laughs> went up and my foot went like that. And um, so I think things happen for reasons. Billy Dee Williams should have played the part. Um, and I enjoyed him. And I enjoyed James Caan. And uh, that's the way it should have gone. So I needed to take a rest and get my Achilles tendon fixed and continue on with my career. And so did Billy Dee. Yes. And it was absolutely wonderful. And I appreciate your, your outlook on that. Oh, and yeah, your attitude yeah. towards that, because that's definitely what launches us and takes us farther as our attitude and our outlook oh, boy, on yeah. things today. Well, it's 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it. Exactly. You know? <laughs> well, it's, you've won several awards, Golden Globe, mm -hmm. Emmy, Academy, and um, I'm sure most of us remember you, Sergeant Foley. Mm -hmm. for all that you did yeah. to poor Richard uh, Gere in Officer and the Gentleman. But what did that do for you? It's very funny. Of course, around the world, I got, got me a, a great places. I got, you know, I got great reception around the world, in, in America and, and all the military. Very psychological thing, which goes away because we had a new president today. But I sure had to pay for kicking that boy. <laughs> I could not hang out in no bars. I couldn't hang out at parties because everybody wanted to see if I really knew what I could do. I did at the time. 
So I, I kind of reluctantly stayed away from all the guys who wanted to fight for Richard Gere. And a movie is a movie, it's make-believe. And we did it well, make-believe. The reality and the make-believe got to be separate. So I had to back away from there. And ironically, I didn't get the job that I expected to get from officer and gentleman. But uh, I really got close to what's real. And what's real is what we're talking about. What's real is uh, our new president. That's real. Those found, I have a foundation called E-Racism. Yeah. And as a result of, of those days, both from Roots and from an officer and gentleman, I realized that uh, the reality is uh, what uh, I was put on the planet with, my constant contact with uh, God and my mother and father, mm -hmm. and who really is in charge, had got nothing to do with any of us on the planet, nor Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So it's got me into a very clean, clear space today to be able to be well and alive and to be able to witness what I witnessed in Washington, D.C. Yeah. I'm so grateful. Talk to us a little bit about eracism, your foundation. Well, of course, uh, we all, up until just the other day, and, and still, uh, W.E.B. Du Bois mentioned a long time ago that everything will get equal, but the most important quality that we have to come overcome is the color barrier. Yes. W.E.B. Du Bois said it, his prediction is coming true, yeah. and we've learned that uh, from generation to generation. And if we want things to get better, especially in this country, we can't go around the world dropping bombs and fighting about democracy if our backyard is dirty. So we're in the process of cleaning up. We want things to get better quite rapidly. We have to pay 100% attention to our children. We make sure that what we plant in our children is only the positives. Absence of racism, because it has to be absence in the West when they see us. And then they, when they get to positions of power, it's gone. And there's some people in America that do that. The Jews do that in the, in the synagogues. Uh, but when they get out to, to positions of power, they're in charge. We have some very exceptional young people. Some of them are in charge of gangs right now who, sh who should be in charge of corporations. And so, but you can't blame them if you never taught them when they were three, four, five, six, and seven years old. And you can tell the difference. If you have hands-on mentorship and love to teach a young child uh, their respect for themselves, respect for the elders, the opposite sex, their deportment, their hygiene, the way they have to, have to present themselves, the conflict resolution, which I, I have created in this Eraserism Foundation called the Shamba Center. And if you get them, a partner aside from school, by the time they get to school, they're ladies and gentlemen. And you can tell in one year how effective this is. And hopefully, if they can tell in one year how effective it is, then you've got a national program. That is just really powerful. His concern for our young people which is not just our future, but they are our now. They play an important role in our lives now. What would you say to a young person right now who desires to be an actor? And um, I guess they would probably say get their name up in lights. What would you say to them? How would you encourage them? Well, first of all, I have to say it three times. Every time you get up in the morning, look in the mirror and say, there's no such thing as impossible. Say that three times. There's no such thing as impossible. You are the most important commodity on the planet, young people. So realizing how that uh, it's on you, and what you learn now is how you're going to be when you're grown. There's no such thing as impossible. You can do anything you dream, anything. There you have it from one of our favorite and one of our well-known actors, Mr. Louis Gossett, Jr., letting our young people know that you can do anything you want to do. You just have to stay focused and you have to believe in your own self. We want to thank you so much for taking the time to come by My A pleasure. Sound Voice Live thank and you. share with us. We admire you, we are proud of you, and we thank God for yes. affording us this little time to share with you. Thank you so much for your time.